I do not trust because of their response to Trump and how they've changed over the last four years, almost all the major media institutions in the country. They have lost my trust because I think at this point they are as interested in, in creating false narratives as, as Trump was. Oh, yeah. I completely disagree with that. I come out, I come out very differently um, for a couple of reasons. The first is to, to reemphasize what I said a minute ago. You have to adjust for the environment people are functioning. And judges operate in a world where people come to them in good faith and don't hand them a brief which is just a pack of lies. When they are handed a brief that is a pack of lies, they have two choices. Traditional judging, which says if the administration says this, I need to assume it's true and grant them full powers. Or do something unusual, which they did, at least at first, until it got to the Supreme Court, which said, no, I have eyes in my head. I can read my morning newspaper. I can see that this is a pack of lies, and I'm not going to let you do it. And that's what they did. That's an impossible situation for the court, similar for the media. Even when, all even you're when doing, the president is within his rights to do something, they threw it out knowing that he was within his rights. So they did so, they did so politically, not judicially. Well, so I, I disagree they did it politically. I think they, when they come when on. they say if you come in with a pack of lies, and but he didn't come in with a, they, someone. The, the, he didn't come in with anything. The the sort of the decision that he can decide who comes into the country or not is pretty well no, established was, for the president of the well, United this is, States. This is a, a rabbit hole about how you interpret that. Um, but I think that the things he was saying to justify his decision and his motives were clearly not consonant with what he and his administration were saying on Twitter and in the courtroom and in the campaign. And a lot of those decisions, I think, hung on the motivations of the government. But OK, whatever. The broader point I'm trying to make, take it or leave it, is that what information warfare, what this is trying to do is shift the information environment to put people in impossible dilemmas. Like, for example, suppose you're the mainstream media and you know that what the administration is saying is a pack of lies. Do you do the typical on the one hand, on the other hand thing? Or do you denounce it as a pack of lies? Well, either way, you lose because it's not supposed to be your job to tell people what to believe. On the other hand, you don't want to just parrot stuff that you think is false. And Trump knows that. The more outrageous, the better. I mean, the man's altering the weather map, right? The man's telling you it did not rain during his inauguration when, in fact, it did rain on his inauguration. So again, the whole point here is to put people in, in impossible positions. Conspiracy theories. This is classic. You put the theory out there. Should the press cover it or ignore it? Trump says Joe Scarborough is a murderer. Do you then say, well, Joe Scarborough is not a murderer? Which, of course, just further installs in people's mind the idea that he might be. Or do you ignore it, which also allows the lie to continue? So, so the point I'm making here, Andrew, is I think you're judging by the wrong standard. I think you're judging by the standard of an information environment that Trump has ravaged. And I think under the circumstances, the press and the courts did remarkably well, especially the reporting that went on under Trump, the amount of stuff that was revealed about him, the, un the fact that most journalists were not intimidated by him, and that we knew most of what was in the Mueller report long before the Mueller report came out because the New York Times and the Washington Post told us. I think if any institution rose to Trump and defended, defended democracy by figuring out what the truth was and telling us, it was, it was the media. But the Mueller report found much less than the media had promised us. That, that the story actually was somewhat deflated by the end of it. The press had no, devoted two people. years to pursuing a conspiracy theory uh, about Russia collusion with the president, of the, a conspiracy with the president of the United States to overturn the election. Um, now, they did that. The, 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 the mainstream media did that. Uh, they've also subsequently decided that their job, for example, the New York Times, its main goal is the uh, dismantling of white supremacy. That's their journalistic mission. And you could even see it in the internal meetings they had. Um, they went, they were going to do Trump and Russia for two years. Then when that didn't, then that didn't work out, they were like, oh, now we have to do race. And, and, and. Uh, entirely along the lines of critical race theory, not in any other zone. So they yeah, knew the story. That... They know the story in advance. They, they, they only report the facts that comport with that. They ignore anything that does not comport with that. And that is in almost every other story you see. And it's driven from the top. A newspaper that publishes the 1619 Project and then wants to actually teach it to children is not interested in airing different points of view. 
It has adopted full scale the notion that there is no constitution of knowledge, that you have knowledge or even your epistemology based upon your identity, that there is no truth, that if you are white, there is a certain truth. If you are black, there is another truth. And their job is to make sure that the, the least powerful truth is advanced against there's no sense that yeah, in the see, New York Times so, they're looking for empirical object objective facts. They're just not anymore. So I won't get into a, a conversation about what's going on at the New York Times. Uh, there's a lot going on there that that I'm not happy with, and I'm an old friend and colleague of, of James Bennett, so I know whereof I speak. Um, but I guess my global re reaction to to all of what you just said, taken as a group, is that. You might be right if you take everything you just said and divide it by 10. It wildly overstates and overinflates real problems in media, but it also overlooks the fantastic contributions that media have made to understanding what was going on in the Trump years 